Hello friends, today we are discussing with the topic dynamic characteristics of the transducers. In the previous topic, we have discussed all the types of the transducers and the sensors and the static characteristics. Now we have to focus on the dynamic characteristics of the transducers. <music> what we have to see the dynamic characteristics of the transducers. What is the basic difference between the static characteristics of the transducers and the dynamic characteristics transducers? In the static characteristics what we have seen if your output is not changing with respect to the time that are called as a static characteristics like accuracy we have seen, precision, repeatability. So those are called as static characteristics. Now what we call as a dynamic characteristics. So the dynamic characteristics are, they are the characteristics in which the output is varying with respect to time. What is the settling time for the output that we have to see in the dynamic characteristics. So what we have to see is dynamic characteristics, the input value changes and the time that value given by the transducer to settle down that are called as dynamic characteristics how your input is varying with respect to time, at what time it reaches to the maximum overshoot and how it falls down. Settling time we have to see in the dynamic characteristics. So let us see one by one. First we have to see the delay time. After that there is a rise time, then peak time, maximum overshoot and settling time. So all these terms related to the output when it changes with respect to the input. So let us see one diagram. So in this what you can see is the green lines which you can see here that are for the inputs and the red lines are for the outputs you can see. And let us see the definitions of the delay time, rise time and the storage time. So in that we have to see how we are going to calculate this rise time, delay time and the storage time and the fall time. So, as we can see here, the green dotted lines are called as input. So, input is always 100%. So, what we have to see here, how your output is changing, how your output is increasing with respect to the input with respect to time. So, in that, whenever there is a increase in the graph, we can say this portion, this is called as delay time. So what is delay time? When your output reaches to the 10% of the input value. So you can see here these are the green lines and this is the 10% of the input. So whenever the output reaches to the 10% of time, so from 0% to the 10% when your output is changing that is called as delay time that is called as delay time. Now what do you mean by rise time? Rise time is nothing but when your output is increasing from 10% to the 90% of the value. See here what can we say in the rise time the output is changing from 10% of value to the 90% of the value that is called as a rise time. So what is the difference in the rise time and the delay time? Delay time is when the output value is changing from 0% to the 10%. So that span is called as delay time whereas in the rise time when the output is increasing with respect to the input from 10% to the 90%. So that is called as rise time. So when we are going to compare this input and the output characteristics graph, what we can say up to the 90% of the value, your output is changing linearly with respect to the input. But after that, it is non-linear. See this curve is showing the non-linear characteristics of the transducers. So that's why it is called as dynamic characteristics of the transducers. So in that, what we have to see, what are the storage time and the false time. So after 90% of the value, when it goes to the 100%, that is called as maximum overshoot. So what is the maximum overshoot? Maximum overshoot is when your output reaches to the peak value. So this is what we can say, this is the peak value. So this peak value is called as maximum overshoot of the 
output and this portion the portion between the blue line and the green line you can say this portion is called as storage time in which your output is storing here so this is called as storage time where the output is constant as you can see here output is constant at the storage time so in this dynamic characteristics the output is linearly as well as non linearly changing with respect to the input so from 10% to the 90% it changes linearly and from 90% it changes non linearly what do you mean by fall time or settling time fall time or the settling time it is the time required for the output to settle down to come for the minimum value so that is called as fall time or we can say that is called as steady state time or settling time so in this diagram where is the fall time the portion between these two blue lines you can say this is called as fall time or called as settling time so what is settling time settling time it is the time required for the output to fall down from the 90% of its maximum value to the 10% of its input value so that is called as settling time or we can say that is fall time so this is all related to the dynamic characteristics of the transducers next portion is what are the basic requirements of the transducers now why we have to focus on the basic requirements of the transducers because it is not the thing that for any kind of the measurement we just go and pick the transducers we have to consider some parameters we have to consider some things related to the transducer how to choose the transducers so what are the basic requirements for choosing a transducer very first thing is the transducer element should recognize and sense the desired input signal and should be insensitive to the other signal now what is the meaning of this if suppose i am trying to choose the thermocouple that is temperature transducer so what is this point is saying in this the transducer element should recognize and sense the desired input signal if suppose i am choosing the thermocouple then it should sense only heat flow or the temperature it should not affect with the other signals like pressure flow or anything so this is the very basic requirement that the transducer should recognize and sense the desired input signal and it should not be insensitive to the other signal that is for other signal it should not recognize so this is the first requirement second is it should not alter the event to be measured that means whatever we have to measure whether it is physical quantity that can be anything like pressure flow temperature so that it should not alter the event to be measured next one is accuracy definitely whatever the change we have to measure that should be accurate so in the transducers it should have good accuracy so what do you mean by accuracy accuracy is the closeness to the true value so whatever the transducers we are choosing for any purpose to calculate or to measure the any physical value it should give us the accuracy then it should gives us the good precision so what is precision precision is the repeatability of the set of the values so the transducer should give us the good precision next one is amplitude linearity now what do you mean by amplitude linearity as we know transducers can sense and convert one form of energy into the electrical signals so whenever we are consider the electrical signal that can be current voltage so if we are considering these terms current or voltages so definitely we have to concentrate on the amplitude so what is amplitude amplitude is the maximum value of the voltage so the amplitude linearity should be developed in the 
transducers. So amplitude linearity means whatever the change in the output voltage that should be linear with respect to the input voltage. So that is called as amplitude linearity. Next one is adequate dynamic response. Just now we have seen the dynamic characteristics of the transducers. So what is the basic requirement for the choosing the transducers is it should give the dynamic response, adequate dynamic response. That means whenever we have to focus on the dynamic characteristics of output, we should get all the values related to the delay time, rise time, maximum overshoot. So it should give us the adequate dynamic response. Next one is it should have high signal level and low impedance. So definitely while choosing and transducers, we require the low impedance because if suppose the impedance factor is changing, the current in the transducer or the electrical quantities in the transducer will be changing and that is not desirable for your output. So in the basic requirements of the transducers, it should have high signal level and should have low impedance value. Then next one is it should be easily available, it should have reasonable price and it should have compact in shape and the size. So whenever we have to choose any transducer, we have to see the compatibility, we have to see what is the size of that. Then it should require the good reliability and rigidness. So what is rigidness? It is the reliability indicates the transducer ability to achieve the predefined accuracy and tolerance repeatedly under the various environmental conditions for the long time period. So what is rigidness? It is what the accuracy and the repeatability of the output by varying the various environmental conditions it should gives us the same values for the output. So this is all related to the basic requirements of the transducers and the dynamic characteristics of the transducers. Thank you.